The EU Emissions Trading System, or ETS, is the behemoth of EU climate policy. It regulates over 12,000 sources of pollution in 31 countries by capping 45% of the EU's emissions and putting a price on carbon. Debate about the ETS has become polarised. Some claim it is the only policy we need, while others believe performance standards or technology subsidies are more effective. The reality is the ETS can play an important role within limitations, and provided its interaction with other policies is better understood. The ETS is designed to reduce emissions to below 21% of 2005 levels by 2020. The ETS has all but met this goal already, as external factors such as high fuel prices and other policies helped reduce emissions. More allowances were created than needed, increasing oversupply and depressing the carbon price. The low carbon price needs to be understood in the context of other policies. We can categorise EU policy four ways and illustrate their interaction through the cost curve. The cost curve condenses complex data to show the cost of the policy in relation to the amount of carbon saved. There are policies that help increase energy efficiency and reduce energy use. These policies often have a net economic benefit if implemented. At the other end of the scale, there are policies for research and development. These policies involve developing and demonstrating new technologies that could serve as powerful new sources of future economic growth. Lower down the cost curve, there are policies to incentivise the deployment of renewable energy. To help drive investment in renewables, investors are given a fixed price guarantee for the electricity generated. Lastly, there is the ETS. The ETS uncovers low-cost abatement opportunities across the electricity and industry sectors. It does this by helping prioritise electricity generation in terms of least emissions and improving the efficiency of heavy industry. The ETS oversupply issue has exposed the challenges of designing climate policy within a globalised energy system. Complex interactions between fuel prices and technology costs have undermined the ETS and caused policy overlap. For example, since 2010, the carbon price required to switch electricity generation from coal to gas increased 150%, while the levelised costs of residential solar PV decreased 50% over the same period. Europe is lucky to have more than one powerful weapon in its climate policy armoury. In the next European Energy and Climate Package, policymakers must get a better handle on how different policies interact and make sure they work in unison to rapidly decarbonise our economy.